These are the main preparation fees that we have. It starts with the ECR, Educational Credential Assessment. We have the language exam for French and English, translation fees, and the medical exam report, and other administrative fees like the police certificate, photographs, etc. Some fees vary depending on the country. For example, if you take the French exam in Quebec, it's going to be more expensive than if you take it anywhere else in the world. Go figure. But those are things you need to keep in mind. Now, when we look at the processing fees, those are exact numbers. They're in Canadian dollars and everybody has to pay that to process their application. The calculus of it, we're going to see that in the case study, but these are the main fees per adult or per child. And obviously, if your family is larger, it's going to be more expensive. But I guess you're used to that more than me. Now, let's move to the second part. Planning. When do you have to pay the fees? We have two milestones in the express entry. The first one is when you enter the pool of candidate. And the second one is after you receive your invitation, when you submit your visa application. So when we look at preparation and processing fees, it's logical. The preparation time happens before you submit. We have all the main expenses except the medical exam, because here the medical exam happens once you receive your invitation. So between entering the pool and submitting the application, but everything else happens before. And when it would come to processing fees, once you submit your PR, this is when you upload all your documents to your online account and enter your credit card information to pay the fees. Remember, only by credit card. The government of Canada only accepts payment by credit card or by debit card if you live in Canada and use Interact. But that's an important thing because people, unfortunately, in many countries don't have access to credit card and then they get it to issues and delays and they ask if they could wire money and then they fall into scams so bottom line only by credit card all right now let's get a bit more technical and accurate with the case study let's start with the case study of a single applicant if you like this type of content please help me and help the channel by liking hitting the bell subscribing all of that that tells youtube that i create quality stuff and it keeps encouraging me creating quality stuff all right, so first we're going to take a look at the first applicant uh, in details, and then you're going to follow the same logic for a family of four. So for a single applicant, let's assume this applicant is really serious because we want a, a role model, somebody who has Canada as a top priority in his life and who want to put everything he can, all his efforts, time and resources to get there as soon as possible. So this candidate, when he starts, he's going to have to pay the language exam. He's going to take two because he's really serious. Then the educational credential assessment, the admin costs of the police certificate, all the photographs, etc., and the medical exam. Now that everything is ready, the candidate got to the pool. He's been invited and he could submit his full PR application. For a serious candidate, all this takes between 6 to 12 months. 6 months if the level of proficiency in the first language is really high already and doesn't require much studying. More around 12 months if the applicant needs to study the first and the second language. Okay, so now that the application is ready to be submitted, this is when you have to pay the three processing fees of CIC. The first one is the processing application fee. That's $825. Then we have the biometrics. That's $85. And finally, the right of permanent residence of $500. Those amounts are the latest to date. And the last update was announced by CIC on April 2020. This brings us for a single applicant to a total of $2,460. Now, we're going to do the same with a family of four. It's basically the same thing, except that it's going to be much more expensive because there are more people and hence more documents to provide. So for the language exams, for example, it's going to be three tests instead of two because the wife or the husband will take a test as well. Educational credential assessment, it remains one in this case because it didn't really make sense to do a whole ECA just for little points for the accompanying spouse. The uh, admin factors are going to be more expensive, obviously, because there are four people. And that's the same thing for the medical exam. Now, when we look at the processing fees, it's going to be the same again. The processing fees, instead of 825 only one time, it's going to be two times because there are two adults. And then they're going to be two more to pay for the children. It's a smaller fee, but still. 
Same thing for the biometrics, it's going to be $170 instead of $85. And for the right of permanent residence, here it's only for adults. So all of this brings us to a total of $4,820 for a family of four. But, and here is a big but, there is a huge warning that I want to make sure that you understand and that you take into account when you prepare your application. This is the minimum budget. I repeat, minimum budget. This budget is assuming that you only take the exam once, that you don't make any mistakes in the preparation, that you don't fall into any of the processing traps that happen once you submit and after you submit, and that you do everything in the right sequence so you don't get any exam expired or things like that. That's why it's important to be prepared ahead of time so when you do your budgeting, you make sure you don't miss out and you lose three, four, five, a thousand dollars because you didn't fill out your application properly. So if you want to be a good student, start by assessing your profile correctly, making sure you have the four things that are mandatory to receive your visa, not only get invited, but actually receive your visa. Those are meeting the minimum requirement, getting an optimal score higher than 440 points, getting your credential actually worth something in Canada, and obviously having the proof of funds in your account. Uh, we're going to talk about the proof of funds in a separate video because it's a big topic in and on itself, but you get the idea. So make sure you actually assess your application properly, that you have an optimal score that will enable you to receive an invitation. And once you have all of that, then you can start paying for different organizations to get your language exam, ECA and all that. But please do things in a smart way. Assess that you have everything it takes first to get the visa, then you can commit and actually start spending money and effort and time into the process. All right. Thank you for watching. That's it for me. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, bell button, all of that, that tell YouTube that I create uh, interesting content and that keeps me creating interesting content. Talk to you soon. Cheers.